Today we've got something a little different, a collection of 911 calls that will warm your heart. From unexpected heroes to incredible rescues, these stories show the amazing side of humanity. So grab some popcorn and get ready to smile. Let's dive in. This 911 call from Australia is sure to put a smile on your face. Ambulance for emergency, what town or suburb? I'm uh, on the M4, head up. What, 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 what it? Reservoir Road, sorry. Reservoir Road. Yeah. Okay, exactly what happened? Um, we just delivered the baby. Okay. In, in the car on the side of the road. All right, and are you with the patient, the patient now? Yeah. You got the mum and dad? Right. Okay, that's good. All right, just stay with me. Uh, the baby's pink, is that a problem? No, that's okay. Is the baby completely out? Yeah, the baby's completely out. How's mum and how's mum? Um, are they both okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm organising help for you now. Just stay on the line and I'll tell you what to do next. Yep. All right. So is the baby crying or breathing? Yeah. Have you got some towels? Oh, that's okay. I appreciate it. That's okay. So, have have you got any towels or um, clean? Yeah. 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 So just clean, just gently wipe off the baby's mouth and nose. Dry the baby off with a clean towel if you have one, and then wrap the baby in your jumper. Okay. Um, cover cover the baby's head, but not its face, because you really need to keep him um, keep it warm. Cover the baby's head, but not its face. Yeah, because you're outside. Just keep the baby warm. Um, and without pulling the cord tight, put the baby in mum's arms on her belly and be sure the cord is not wrapped around the baby's neck. And they both... The cord's not wrapped around the baby's neck. Yeah. Thank you. It's really important you keep both of them warm. Yep. And uh, uh, I do baby on mum's chest. Yeah, and do not cut the cord, okay? No, I will not cut the cord. Oh, good. We the good. Answer. And do not, no, that, do not pull on the cord and the afterbirth oh. should deliver soon. Tell me if anything changes, okay? What's your first name? My first name is David. David. Well, congratulations, David. Thanks for your getting here. <laughs> yeah, you did a good job without me. <laughs> um, how's mum going? I read, I, read, I, read, I read a book. I read a book about half an hour ago. I had a few things to Oh, that's great. There you go. Why do you need an obstetrician? Yeah. Because I don't want to ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> you did a really good job. I just delivered my own baby. <laughs> a girl. Hi, what was your name? Hi, Peter. Congratulations. Thanks, Rita. Well done. Uh, I think it's the best way possible, but I would never speak again. <laughs> Me too. It's so Take care. Bye bye. In August 2020, a seemingly ordinary day turned into an extraordinary one for David Price and his wife in Blacktown, Australia. It all began with a simple joke as David playfully brandished an old SAS survival guidebook his grandfather had given him quipping that he was now ready to deliver their baby. Little did they know, life had its own plans. As they hurried to reach the hospital, time seemed to have a different agenda. Things began moving faster than they had ever imagined. With each passing moment, the need for immediate action became undeniable. David's instincts kicked in, and he made the split-second decision to pull over on the M4 highway. He dialed 911, and on the other end was Peta Slay, a paramedic who would soon witness something truly remarkable. Peta was taken aback by David's astonishing calmness and his unwavering determination. With guidance from Peta, David performed every action necessary to ensure the safe delivery of his own child. And then, in the midst of a busy highway, a new life was brought into the world, and a father became a hero. As emergency services arrived, they were met not with chaos, but with a beautiful moment of triumph. David's love, courage, and quick thinking not only delivered a precious life, but also showed us all the incredible strength that resides within us. This is the heartwarming story of David Price, a father who turned an ordinary day into an extraordinary one. Because sometimes, life's most precious moments are the ones we least expect. This 911 dispatcher is being called a hero for what she did when a mute man called for help. Cleveland, please, can you hear me? Is that you telling me you can hear me? Okay, I'm going to take the banging as a yes. So, do you require police? Are you hurt in any way? So, just to confirm, bang again. Are you hurt? If, bang again if you are. And bang again if you need an ambulance. OK, 
Okay. Are you on your own? Right. Okay. Need to know, is it your breathing? Are you breathing okay? Bang is fit or yes? Right. Am I right in saying that you're struggling with your breathing? Okay. From your breathing, do you have any other injuries? Are you on the floor? Okay, you're not. Are you in bed? You're in bed. Okay. Let you know I've rang an ambulance, okay? We'll get somebody there for you, all right? Okay, just stay there and we, well, we will be with you soon. Can you bang again for yes? Is the door unlocked? So the door is is locked. Bang if it for a yes. Is the door locked? Right, okay. Um, just wondering how we're going to get in. So we'll need to get police to get break into your property, okay? Right, why are you banging so heavy? Is that okay? Bang for yes again. Are you able to go to your front door and unlock it? You are. Okay, well, I suggest you go to the front door. I suggest you go to the front door and unlock the front door. Can you do that? Knock for yes. Okay. We've got an ambulance on the way, all right? Good. Okay, we'll be there soon, all right? Catherine Longstaff an experienced 911 dispatcher for the Cleveland Police in England faced a life-altering call that day. A mute man dialed 999, desperately seeking help. His only means of communication was by knocking. Catherine's remarkable ability to interpret the knocks quickly kicked into gear as she recognized the urgency of the situation. She promptly coordinated emergency services to the man's location, ensuring they arrived in time. Thanks to Catherine's swift actions, responders arrived at the man's home and saved his life just in the nick of time. The 63-year-old man had contacted the police before, and their records contained his name and phone number. His primary mode of communication was a simple whiteboard, which had been his lifeline. After his miraculous rescue, the man used that very same whiteboard to express his heartfelt gratitude. He extended his appreciation to everyone involved in saving his life, with a special mention for Catherine Longstaff, the dispatcher who understood his silent plea. This story reminds us that heroes can be found in unexpected places, and sometimes they're the ones answering your call in times of crisis. Let's celebrate the extraordinary efforts of people like Catherine who make a difference when it matters most. In a heartbreaking cry for help, an 81-year-old cancer patient found himself in a dire situation. Stay there, man. One with that emergency. Okay. That time I spoke to you was about 3.30 in the morning on January the 2nd, 2014. And they rushed me to the hospital. Now, that's the first time I've been home in this apartment since that time. Now, here is the problem. I'm not imperiled upon life or limb, but what I need is someone to get to the grocery store and bring me some food because I need to eat something. I don't, really, I don't need to be transported. I'm here a place for as family, but I would like to get somebody from the college to bring me some uh, small order and that's how I can get something to eat. Now, I realize transporting you like in a that's how I was transporting a uh, vehicle number 24. Outstanding, outstanding group of men. So I don't know how to handle this without getting out of the bleaking light going in, in this uh -huh. table. Okay. But I do need some emergency services here. Okay, what is your name, sir? Oh, All right, one moment, Mr. One moment, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to get someone out there to you. Um, one second. Do you need someone to bring the food to you? Yes, please. I, I, I have. I just. I can barely walk. I was holding on to a chair and when not in my wheelchair. Here's a couple ideas. Just what I, I would like to call it to you to bring me. I like uh, one fresh cabbage, 
uh, avocado, two bananas, and three peppers. What kind of pet? Just like, I, I, don't, I don't know what kind of stuff I would No, have. I mean, um, two liters or the, the, the big bottle or whatever that is. Uh -huh. And you want three of that? Three of those. And they, they have the excellent sort of thing of uh, what they call processed ham. It looks like bologna, but it's actually uh, uh, extra ham and, and a pack of that. And uh, maybe a pack of uh, the... Uh, Ready prepared uh, potato salad. Maybe a, a can of beets and a can of uh, green beans. And I believe. Oh, yeah, this is my absolute favorite in the entire world. Stage two popcorn. I, I love that. I, I like it. And uh, I believe that'll have a home in. Maybe I'll, I'll think of uh, tomato juice. These television people are on their way to. To get my television going, so I, I don't know how you can handle it. Oh, I, I'm not sure either. I'm going to send someone out there to talk with you, okay? That sounds like a good idea, my friend, because I have met some fantastic people with 911. That two boys that took me there, and thank God they, they had to close the door first to get me out. And, oh, goodness. And anyway, I got to the hospital about 4 a.m., and uh, but I'm, I'm recovering pretty well. It's a rehab place. And they let me go and uh, all that, so I'm I, I doing better. So you could get me started there. Maybe I can get over there organized. But uh, how old are you? Pardon me. How old are you? I'm uh, 81. I'll be 82. Come on. Oh wow, that's fantastic. And I tell you what, thing, buddy. That crew y'all sent for me that night. Uh huh. And crew crew 24. That is what and then crew boys. But anyway. But anyway, so whatever you can do to help, I'll be there. I can't do anything. I can't go anywhere. Okay. I can't get out of my damn chair. Okay. So you can't, you you can't, can't walk. walk. Do you have any, what other, what kind of medical conditions do you have? Well, now that I'm home, uh -huh. I have a, uh, I'm in a weakened state. I can walk with assistance. And I think I've overcome all the other things. I couldn't even walk when I got to the hospital, but now I can walk around the, with my walker inside the building and, and do it fairly well. So once I get something here, I can manage it because this, this apartment is made for a fifth of living. Uh -huh. It's flat. No step. Uh -huh. uh, so it's made for, for people like me. That oh, yeah, that's good. Now, you said, did you say apartment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are your doors unlocked? I locked the, the front door is unlocked. Okay. I'll look forward to somebody coming, okay? All right, we'll get someone out there to talk with you, okay? Okay, buddy. All right, feel better. Thank you. Bye-bye. When Clarence Blackman finally returned to his home after an extended hospital stay for cancer treatments and rehabilitation, he was greeted by an unsettling reality. His refrigerator stood empty, and his cupboards were bare. The 81-year-old veteran, weakened by his medical ordeal, found himself unable to venture out and restock his pantry. The hunger pangs in Clarence's stomach intensified as time went on, leaving him feeling utterly desperate and alone. He had no close relatives or family members nearby who could lend a hand. His beloved wife Wanda, his partner through thick and thin, had tragically lost her battle with cancer years prior. Without her by his side and no immediate support system to turn to, Clarence found himself facing an incredibly difficult situation. Though it was an unconventional step, Clarence decided his only recourse was to place a call to 911 for assistance. He pleaded with the operator, Marilyn Hinson, for someone to help him acquire the most basic of necessities, food. Marilyn, deeply moved by Clarence's plight, knew she had to act. With her supervisor's blessing, she ventured to the grocery store carefully selecting the items Clarence had requested. A head of cabbage, cans of beans and beets, popcorn, tomato juice, and soft drinks. But Marilyn didn't stop there. Joined by officers from the Fayetteville Police Department, she personally delivered the groceries to Clarence's doorstep. In a touching gesture, she even prepared a ham sandwich for him, which he gratefully described as a feast. Clarence's simple call for help reverberated far beyond his humble abode. News of his predicament spread like wildfire, 
igniting an outpouring of compassion from individuals across the country. Offers of food, support, and even monetary donations poured in, overwhelming Clarence with the generosity of strangers. It was like a little miracle ringing in my ear, I thought, Jesus, you answered those prayers, Clarence said. As the donations continued to flow in, Clarence asked that any further contributions be directed to local food banks and the Salvation Army, ensuring that others in need would not go hungry. In the midst of his darkest hour, Clarence Blackman's cry for help was answered not just by a single act of kindness, but by a tidal wave of human compassion, reminding us all that even the smallest gestures can make a profound difference in someone's life. The story of how this nine-year-old boy saved his grandfather's life by making a 911 call will definitely warm your heart. 911, the recorded. Where is your emergency? Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, this is 911. Um, yes, my grandfather has a, is acting very strange. He's acting very strange? And he's in the car and he's banging on the pedals. He's getting really angry. All right, where are you? Um, eight, four, eight. 85 Forsyth? Yes, 85 Forsyth. 85 Forsyth? Yes. And Somerset? Yep. Now, where are you right now? I'm in the driveway. You're in the driveway? In the car. You're in the car with him? Yes. So what I want you to do is, can you get out of the car? Uh, sure. All right, now, is there anyone else there? Uh, no. There's no one else there, just you and your grandfather? Yes. All right, can you... Uh, do you do you mind if I ask him a question? Yep. Uh, Papa? Are you alright? Papa? Yeah, he's not answering me. He's not answering you? No, he's just really mad. Okay, can you get back into the house at all? Uh... Or does yeah. he have the keys? No, I'm able to. The garage door is open. Okay. okay. So I want you to go back in the house for me, okay? Okay. Alright, now what's your name? My name is Kaden. Kaden? K-A-Z-I-N, Kaden. Okay. And what's your last name? Chrisman, C-R-I-S-M-A-N. And do you know what this phone number is? No, but I do know my dad's and my mom's. All right, and did you try calling either of them? No. All right. <laughs> so what's he doing? <laughs> So he's like really angry. He's making like uh, uh, sounds. All right, I want you to stand the line with me, okay? Yeah. How old are you? I'm nine. You're nine? Yeah. Hold on for a minute. Puzzle, what is wrong? Put the call. Are you okay? What? Nope. Not. I'm trying to put the call in, okay? Yeah. I need you to make your way to 85 Forsyth Avenue, 85 Forsyth Avenue. I've got a nine-year-old caller on the phone saying his grandfather's acting strange. He's becoming enraged, but he's in the car right now. Hello? No, no. Hello. All right, I have the police on the way, okay? Yes. All right, now is the car on? No, no. It's off. It's off? Okay. Yeah. I just don't know what Okay, he might be having a medical issue right now. Yeah. I don't know, he's a diabetic, too. Alright, so you know he has diabetes? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if he's high or low right now. Okay. What was that? Are you alright? What? What was that noise? Was that your grandpa? That, yeah. Alright, and... He's not really responding to you, is he? No, he's not even saying a word. He's not saying a word, he's just making noises? Yes. All right, do you know how old he is? Uh, I think 80. All right, so you think he's 80 years old? Yes, but he's really healthy, though. Okay. He has not look 80 at all. All right, he might be having a medical issue right now, okay? Yeah. I mean, I watch uh, Night Watch. Nightwatch Nation. Okay. Do you know what that is? I do. Yeah, so I don't know if it's like cardiac or anything. Yep, so uh, I have an ambulance on the way as well. Okay. 
All right, now where were you guys going? Uh, Morocco's. So you're going to Morocco's for dinner? Yes. All right. Now, do you know if anything like this has ever happened with him before? No, he says, uh, 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 he, he's had he's had a few um accidents before. Once falling off the bed, and the, uh, a fire department came, mm-hmm. and another and another one was at my house, and then this would be and this would be a third one right now. Hey, Steve, it's going to be for an eight-year-old and they're going to be feeding. All right, they're on the way right now, okay? Yes. The child did mention that their grandfather was diabetic. She still is. Yep, I told them that. Okay. Your time is 1728. Do you see the police officer there? Yes. I'll be right. here, okay? All right, go talk to them, okay? Okay. All right, good job. In the heart of a quiet Massachusetts town, A remarkable story of courage and quick thinking unfolded in January 2019. Kazan Krisman, a nine-year-old boy with a heart of gold and a determination that would prove to be life-saving. It was just another day for Kazan and his beloved 80-year-old grandfather, Alan Krisman. They were excitedly preparing for a simple trip to their favorite pizza place. Little did they know, this ordinary outing would soon take an unexpected turn. As they were about to set off, Alan began to act strangely. His movements were off, and he wasn't responding. In that crucial moment, it was young Kazan who became the beacon of hope. Without hesitation, he reached for his phone and dialed 911, his young voice unwavering as he described the situation to the dispatcher. I remembered what I learned in school about emergencies and I knew I had to call for help, said Kazan. Thanks to Kazin's quick thinking, emergency responders arrived swiftly, providing the vital medical assistance that Alan needed. It was a moment that would forever bond this young hero and his grateful grandfather. Authorities even bought the two of them a pizza to celebrate. Reflecting on that day, Kazin shared how proud he felt about his actions, knowing that he made a difference when it mattered most. In the face of adversity, a young boy named Kazin Kreisman proved that a hero can emerge from unexpected places, teaching us all that bravery knows no age limits. In a small town near the Robertson County Fairgrounds, a routine day took a dramatic turn in January 2023, leading to a remarkable water rescue that showcased the strength of community spirit. 911 location of your emergency. Uh, yes, we got two teenage girls in the water at the old dam uh, down by the fairgrounds. Uh, we need uh, emergency service immediately. Uh, one looks to be unconscious. Uh, one is floating. Okay. Yeah. And you said you're right there at the, the fairgrounds? In the yeah, they're or... in the water uh, down by the dam at the de- right in front of the, where the old dam comes across, where Can they have the tell, farmer's they... flea market. Okay. Can you tell if they're breathing? One is. One does not look like she is. Uh, they look to be 12 to 14. Did they look like they were going swimming or like they fell in? I have no idea. Uh, maybe swim. I don't know. They were on skateboard or skateboards here. Uh, uh, one of the girls, she's already turned blue, looks like. Do you have someone in route? Yes, sir. Okay, is there somebody that can wave help down when they get over there? Uh, yeah, my wife's down at the bank. One of us, uh, well, they can see us from the bridge. When they get to the bridge, they'll be able to see us. Okay, so when they're at Memorial on the bridge, they'll be able to see you? Yes, uh-huh. I can hear the sirens now. Okay, I, I'm going to stay on the phone with you until somebody's out there with you guys, okay? Can you still see both the girls? Uh, yeah, one girl's swimming. She, the other, she's got a hold to the other one. Okay, the ambulance is turning in. Okay. While strolling nearby, a concerned couple witnessed a perilous situation unfold. Two teenagers, Cheyenne Walters and her 16-year-old friend, found themselves in distress as Cheyenne fell into the water while trying to retrieve a toy ball. The couple promptly dialed 911, initiating a critical chain of events that would highlight the power of community intervention. Responding to the emergency, the couple became impromptu heroes. Utilizing their dog leash, they assisted the teens, 
ensuring they weren't left to face the danger alone. Crossing a nearby bridge, a couple with a law enforcement background witnessed the unfolding crisis. Without hesitation, they made a U-turn and rushed to the creek. The husband bravely entered the water while his wife, Angela Looney, provided crucial support. Working in tandem, they managed to lift Cheyenne from the water and facilitated life-saving CPR, awaiting the arrival of emergency medical services. Quickly transported to TriStar Centennial Children's Hospital in Nashville, Cheyenne faced a critical condition and the dedicated efforts of those at the scene played a pivotal role in her survival. Robertson County EMS Director Brent Dyer said, These folks definitely stepped in and worked to help save some lives. The first hero in this situation is hands down the friend. This other teenage girl who risked her own life by going into the water first to hold her friend up and to work to rescue her as she went unconscious in her arms. A GoFundMe campaign later assisted in raising over $5,000 for Cheyenne's medical expenses. After months, including time in the ICU and therapy in Atlanta, Cheyenne returned home. Her journey to recovery continues as she relearns basic skills. In times of crisis, ordinary individuals can become extraordinary heroes. This story reminds us that unity and selflessness can turn a dire situation into a beacon of hope.